Well, I better make this quick. Um, as you can see, I'm on some kind of vacation. Uh, I'm in a cabin, and my phone is telling me I have 12 minutes to record before my phone fills up. So, we'll see what we can do. I wanted to talk because I was influenced by uh, What If Alt Hist's video, Rudyard over there, uh, his video to the Pennsylvanians, because he's a native Pennsylvanian and, you know, he's talking about politics and all that and why it matters and the difference in culture that uh, the left and the right have. And I can talk about all that, all that kind of stuff, but again, I only have 12 minutes. It inspired me to say something because for a long time on this channel and even in my personal life, I have kind of stayed away from political things because... For the religious people, even among them, politics is taboo. So my pastor, for example, will say, here's what I think about a specific political issue, and I'm not telling you to go vote. I'm not wanting to be a political pastor. You know, don't call me out. I think this is a time when we need to put those taboos aside and talk about these things, but not only talk about them, to actually be men of action. Um, I'm personally doing this video and putting this out there because I want to stop hiding behind this idea that political things are taboo and I just shouldn't talk about them uh, because it's really going to matter. And I think for a lot of people in the next few years, and especially in the next week with our presidential election, this is kind of a, uh, a struggle between life and death. And... If I sound alarmist, well then good, because it is. Uh, I'm not going to hide behind that anymore either by saying, oh, you know, I don't want to scare you. Um, we have two different parties in America, neither of which are perfect. Trust me, I've got my problems with Trump right now. But we have one party who wants to kill children, who is actively killing children, who's advocating for things like euthanasia, who wants to import Islam into our country like it's being imported in Europe right now, um, who wants racial reparations, who wants to, and has said many times that they want to kill people that look like me. On the other side, you have people who maybe they want too much, too much of their own freedom and individualism, sure, but they say they want people to be able to live a nice life and to have a house and to start a family and to do work that pleases them and all that kind of stuff. It's a no-brainer to me. Something that I learned from that video from Rudyard is that the, the number of uh, 800,000 jobs that Biden was saying they had uh, put into the economy Recently, from another video um, from Don't Walk Run Productions, I learned it's not, ex it's not actually 800,000, but still, whatever number it is, apparently 100% of them went to immigrants, which isn't surprising because we're importing lots of immigrants into this country, and the people who live here are being told, we don't care about you, uh, you're not important, die, essentially. The future looks bleak depending on which administration we are uh, going to vote in next week. I think the future looks a lot brighter under someone like Trump, even though, as I've said before, I disagree with him on several things. Um, I think he should be harder on abortion. I don't think IVF should be a thing. He's kind of like a moderate 90s liberal type He's not a, a, a true conservative, technically. So, yeah, I'm going to have my differences with him. But at least he wants me to stay alive, you know? At least he doesn't want me dead. The big thing I want to talk about, though, that I think nobody else is talking about, or at least very few people, and that I think is going to be a real problem, is Islam. That's something that I've talked about a lot on this channel. Um, that's something I'm very interested in in my personal research. I'm watching... England turn into an Islamic caliphate right now 
And you look up in places like Michigan and Dearborn, where there are entirely Muslim populations up there. Back in 2009, people were getting put into prison for preaching the gospel on the streets there. David Wood and Nabil Qureshi, they were thrown into prison for a night. I mean, obviously they were released because you can't do all that much. But they were still thrown into prison for preaching the gospel in a Muslim town in America. I see an increasing amount of Muslims at the university that I work at and around in my town. Maybe that for whatever reason, they're coming specifically to where I am, but I don't think I'm alone in that. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to share the gospel with them and all that. Sure, but there comes a point when you have so many Muslims, and especially the men who hate Christianity, who hate Jesus, and who are very violent, as you see going on in England right now, that you need great, strong men from Christianity to stand up and stop being sissies. So this is my call to other men out there who actually want to stand up and do something. Now's the time before it gets worse. We've been saying now's the time for years now. I know that. Now's the time for me to be the one to pass along the message to somebody else and say, wake up. Do something with your life. Be useful. You can make you can make your life useful even if other people don't want you to be useful. Because another one of the things that the left does is they don't want you to be useful. We can make ourselves useful. We can actually make a better life for our families uh, and stand up to evil. And evil is all over the place out there. So my call to action, if it were, to people is to become Christians to read things like uh, Hebrews 12, which talks about people being stoned to death and sawed in half and put to death with the sword and all manner of terrible things for the sake of Christ, which they willingly went into because of the faith that they had. I don't know that I could be okay with being sawed in half for anything that I believe in. I mean, I, I wouldn't really know until I got there, I guess. But those people went to their deaths for something like that uh, because they really truly believed in it and because it, it was a good thing. Uh, I think we need more people with that kind of mindset nowadays where they're willing to die for something. It's not like, so it's not like you can just uh, believe in something and then if somebody comes and threatens you, you know, you lie for a minute to save your butt and then you go back to believing what you believed in. That time is going to pass if it's not already passing. There are times in a man's life that you need to die on a certain hill. And sometimes, in some places, you're literally going to be dying, physically dying, not just economically or whatever, or philosophically. You're literally going to be dying on a hill. That's where the term comes from. It's guys who died on a hill for something, to protect something. I see the future of our country being so bleak if someone like Kamala Harris becomes the president because the last four years have not been great. They've been really bad, but this may be the last official election in the way that would be recognizable to anybody from the past 200 years in our country. This is the time when we need to stand up and this is the hill that we die on. 